Welcome to Awesome Algo Shorts, episode number two. These particular videos are only going to be available on YouTube and they are not always going to be directly related to Web3 or smart contract development on Algorand, but if there would be interesting overlaps, of course, I will try to incorporate as much of that particular domain as possible. Let's do something really fun today. So we are going to use this live coding environment that is able to essentially generate or synthesize audio on your machine. So it's basically a programmable synthesizer that you can interact with through their platform. It's cross-platform made by this guy, Sam Aaron. He is a postdoc from University of Cambridge and he also collaborated a lot with Raspberry Pi Foundation. They made this open source platform and I think initially started as a as a tool to teach kids to basically learn music but in parallel also learn some programming. So regardless it's been around for a while. The initial release was in 2012. We are going to use the macOS version and don't worry if you have the the Apple Silicon based uh, laptops it should be working just fine. Um, I have it right here already so let me just play a quick example. You can also see that the IDE also has tutorials integrated and yeah, samples, you can pretty much jump in between different presets. The right area is just indicators here to represent the current configurations for the track that is about to be played, rendered, and there is also a nice sort of equalizer styled visualizations. And yeah, of course, the IDE itself looks like a regular ID and as mentioned, I think the language is Ruby. I don't know why Ruby, but it's done in Ruby. Um, let's play a little example so you will just hear the part of a prompt that I'm going to use for ChatGPT based on the GPT-4 model to try to generate a completely new, unique sort of snippets that we will then try to paste into Sonic Pi and see what happens, see what kind of music, what kind of sounds it's going to generate. So this one is called Cloud Beat and all credits to the guy who coded it, of course, Pete Nowak. So let's try to play it. So as you can hear, yeah, this was a sample. We're gonna use it as a sample to provide a little of additional context into the prompt that we're gonna to give to the GPT in the chat. So what code, what code are we going to use? I figured I'll pick something that has a lot of coverage in GPT dataset. JavaScript is probably occupying a good chunk if you take a subset of all programming languages that is in training set, I'm sure there's a lot of JavaScript and TypeScript and stuff like this because it's a very common programming language. And I actually tested this before the video, so I tried Tealish, I tried Beaker, PyTeal, which is a more Python-like syntax. I tried to compare it with the Teal script as well. And as suspected, they are actually, the results are usually the best at the moment for Teal script simply because GPT probably has a lot of good examples and references in this training data set that are given in JavaScript. For those unfamiliar with Teal script, it's a TypeScript compiler that generates Teal code that runs on AVM and that's how the apps on Algorand work essentially. It's made by a guy named Joe Polny. He's a, an engineer from Algorand Foundation. You can check out also Malgo, the latest episode 16, which we made recently, that essentially covers the entire history of this language creation and how it basically tries, we, what sort of target audience of developers it tries to help with. And you can write pure smart contracts just in TypeScript. And once again, before the video actually played around with different configurations, I found out that the very simple examples like calculator, things like that, 
they are not necessarily going to be very accurate or the music isn't going to be very long so what i also wanted to do with this video is basically try to see if there is a way to get a really good results that wouldn't require any additional prompts right so ideally if everything will go well by the end of this video we will actually be able to just with a single prompt get the code for sonic pi play it and that will sound fine enough not to edit anything not to ask additional questions to the model to rewrite something in the code or things like that a little experiment we'll see what happens so let's pick merkle the example that is available here on teal script repository provides yeah it's an implementation of merkle tree that lives on chain essentially and i assume methods here also represent how how to interact with this data structure so it tries to encapsulate the core functionality of a merkle tree within a smart contract so, but the method itself are emulating methods that you would expect on an example merkle tree implementation on some other language that is not something that is part of a virtual machine that lives on chain right of course there's absolutely zero sense in trying to take a particular business logic for a smart contract that works on a completely different domain and trying to transpile it into a domain specific ruby based language that is optimized for basically programming synthesizers but i believe with the gpt4 i think we can get pretty good results actually because we don't really need a one-to-one -one transpilation we want to see if there is a way to reimagine the structure of a particular code base without dipping too much into business logic and reimagine the structure in this ruby based syntax that will work in sonic pi and ideally we might have something that both sounds interesting and at the same time structurally it represents a particular piece of code i don't know maybe some smart contracts could also have collections so going to GPT as a prerequisite for this video, if you want to replicate everything you're seeing on screen, you would need to purchase the GPT Plus subscription. So yeah, we go on the OpenAI website, we get the selector opened and we pick the GPT-4 model. The prompt is going to consist from a set of different parts. The first is essentially the instruction. So what are we giving as an instruction for the model? As you can see, it's relatively low effort prompt and we're just saying okay so sonic pi you're going to get text of that represents smart contract code as an input your goal is to basically make a music and like dark ambient or techno style and let's see if it can like add additional depth some additional details to the sounds but the funny part here is as i mentioned earlier we want to also try to preserve the structure of the code that we are about to transpile, right? So let's say name variables and functions after respective variables and functions in reference code where applicable. Add comments to highlight which part the original source code inspired each particular method in Sonic Pi. And so then we basically get this part is optional. Of course, you can also specify particular gen genres of music or like particular bands you want to influence the output style creative since it's going to be structured with title and subtitle it i think should be possible for it to of course understand that this style should represent either the style of the music that it should code in sonic pi or the style should represent a particular mode of operation that it needs to use in order to be creative in the response uh, must have instruments so once again this is something that magically will be just automatically semantically understood by the model and i assume that this should basically affect the amount of things that it's going to code in sonic pi must have instruments and i guess ambient drum bass what else let's just go with these three for now audience so let's see if it can optimize a music let's just say we are going to bet that it's going to extract semantic understanding that the music that will be played in sonic pi should be something that is an average of 
popular musical genres for people within that age category. Output, Sonic Pi, code wrapped in code blocks. This is just a command on how we do expect the output. So ideally, it shouldn't explain anything. It should just start typing and giving us the code in the code block. And reference is what we just copied, right? We're going to put the teal script. Extra sample training data, as I said in the beginning, this is a snippet from Sonic Pi. And with that, let's just see what happens. Okay, so... Yeah, so it actually prefixed and named the file, also supplying the CSS as like a specific parameter, so I guess it could be treated as a title of a song. Dark ambient techno inspired by Merkel trees. <laughs> okay, so let's see if it actually names any of the variables or like functions similar to. Oh, yes, look at this. Drums inspired by is right sibling. Do we have is right sibling in the. Yeah, okay, so it's a private method, but I guess. I guess there is not a lot of similarity in regards to business logic right because it wouldn't make a lot of sense the particular commands that it will execute in sonic pi these are very specific to like the instrument or the, you know, whether like you're trying to manipulate a note or some sort of frequency okay so looks like that's it i'm going to be very very surprised if this is just going to run out of the box and there won't be any syntactical errors because I don't know if there is actually a lot of data on Sonic Pi out there on the internet. Let's see. This is quite something. Okay, let's see what else. Basically, live loop is random seed. Okay, so the names of the instruments it didn't use. The, uh, I guess it couldn't find any similarity or anything that makes sense in regards to be reused from the context of names of variables and functions in the smart contract code. But at least we saw a few comments okay yeah so at least it mentioned that okay wow okay so this bass line this very thick bass line was inspired by these two functions here so update leaf and append leaf <laughs> okay let's see what else can we do actually the very final artifact at the end of this video is going to be a fully refined song from sonic pi Let's say add more harmonic progressions and instruments. Make it catchy. And I suppose there's some interesting algorithms that they're using for tokenizing all of this. Or maybe there is just some sort of very fancy or customized graph or like a vector based database and store that to address memory because yeah gpt4 gpt3.5 they don't really have memory they're more like oracles right they they are able to observe but they can't really interact directly but this is going to change really soon with the plugins and things like that okay so what just happened is we run out of tokens in the response output, but there is an easy way to solve it. I actually played with it before, and if you actually say continue, and continue usually works for most of the cases like this when you have a code output being generated, but it just doesn't finish and just stops somewhere in the middle. To fix and address that, you actually need to say continue the following code. And we just pass it right so it's the world's most powerful now to complete anyway so let's see 
Okay, so here it messed up a bit in regards to the style. This stuff happens from time to time. It's going to be a little bit annoying to copy it. But let's actually save this one. This is a really nice preset. So let's call it DJ Teal Script Part 1. Okay. <laughs> so the next part. And we end somewhere here. Let's see if it is a valid syntax. And Okay, so we finally got the sample of it. I think it followed the question very precisely, to be honest. Looks very accurate. Short progress, <laughs> I have a tree that, okay, so see, it actually does try to also logically fit it into, within the constraints of that DSL that Sonic Pi provides. Really interesting. If you want to reuse it, just feel free to pause the video, go back to the part with the prompt. I tested it on multiple types of musical genres that you could pretty much play in Sonic Pi. And by the way, you can also use custom MIDI audio files. I, I believe there's also ways to load custom presets, custom samples. So you can really do simulate, emulate, generate any kinds of sounds you pretty much want if you put some extra effort into it and okay and one final question name this song decentralized echoes wow okay yep let's call it decentralized echoes thank you